In this video, we are talking about the comic book versions of War Machine and Mantis with my man Oddball Comics. So let's go smash it. Valley Fire. Smash! Hey, what's up, all you Valley Maniacs? Valley Flying here. I am back. Welcome to the channel. Now, today in this video, we're doing something a little different. I am joined by Oddball Comics. Now, I met this guy on a stream, and he's he's moderated the Discord server for a while. But he's a friend of the channel, and he is an expert in comics. He has a YouTube channel on comics, and he's also an MSF player. So what I wanted to do in this video, and this may be a series, depending on how popular this gets, how many... Uh, likes this gets so if you like this video make sure you smash in that like button because uh we will do this maybe every update hopefully uh but what i wanted to do is talk about these characters from a comic book perspective because i'm more familiar with the mcu but oddball he is an expert in comics so what's up oddball how are you doing oh, i'm doing good today man how about yourself i am doing good as well uh before we get into the new characters we're going to talk about war machine and mantis right because you're doing something on carnage on your channel coming up something a little more in depth i am we're, we're doing a huge origin story and some big main titles that carnage is featured in here in the next few months nice nice i, I look forward to watching that uh so we're going to save carnage for your channel but in this video we're going to talk about war machine and Mantis, because War Machine, there's a lot of similarities between him and the movies, you were telling me, but there's a lot of differences with Mantis. So, because War Machine's out where right now, I, I think we'll let's start with him. So, what what are your thoughts on War Machine real quick before we get into his the comic book version of War Machine? So, I'm, a, I'm actually a big fan of the kit. I do like how... We're setting up for Alliance Wars here in the next few months, whenever they finally release it. I'm excited with the... I love his ult. I love the 30% per hero, hero ally. There's a lot of chances for us to mix him in with other teams besides tech now with that option. And so I'm excited to see what's going to happen with this character in the future. Yeah, I, I think he's a good character. I, I haven't seen a lot of maxed out or very high... Uh, highly built versions of him but from what i've seen of him so far with these uh minimal minimal rank versions he looks like a very good character so the the kit that i was expecting is translating very well uh but let, let's get into some differences because i'm i'm familiar with the terrence howard and don Cheadle versions of war machine uh and you're more you are more of an expert on the comic so what are some differences between what I've seen in the movies and what you have noticed of this character in the comic books? So with Rhodey, we see like in the movies, like the MCU, he's often known as an Air Force pilot when actually in all reality, he actually started as a Marine, a pilot in the Marines. And he's stationed in Southeast Asia for a little while because he was actually introduced in Iron Man number 118. I want to say it was like January 1979. Okay. And he actually ended up taking the mantle for Iron Man for a little while, while Tony Stark had a relapse due to his alcoholism. So he, he, Rhodey was actually Iron Man is what you're saying. Not, yeah. not just War Machine. Okay. Interesting. Not a lot of people know that. I, I didn't know that before we had our conversation. So what, what else did we know about this character? Because I'm not, I'm not very familiar with this uh, comic book version. Well, there's nothing... Too much that kind of crazy happened with him. Really, he was a background character for Tony Stark for the longest time. There was a series, though. It's not really connected to the main Marvel Universe, but where he basically fought off zombies in Marvel Zombies. And he was, like, one of the last humans. And that was a pretty cool series. But other than that, he's more of a background role. Has he ever had his own comic book series, or he's just kind of a supporting character for the Iron Man? He's mainly just a supporting character. And if he has had one, they're very small and they're just kind of one, one or two issue series. Okay. Uh, now, it, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of differences between that. And it, it, we talked about Mantis. There's a lot. We'll get into that. So I, I guess the War Machine part of this video will be the short part. <laughs> um, all right. Let, let's talk about his kit. Do you, do you think that represents 
the comic book version well because what I know about the movies, I think it does represent the movie version well. What do you what do you feel about the comic book version of War Machine? I think the kit actually represents very well. I'm going next to the comics, I think、uh, a lot of the stuff you would see on a typical Iron Man suit. So nothing really too crazy. I kind of just wish we saw a really cool animation like Iron Man Two style when it came down to him teaming up with Iron Man. Like a big team up, like with when they fought the I can't remember Whiplash. Yes, Whiplash. Yeah.、Um, all right. Yeah. So the, I, I guess I guess my only complaint would be that、uh, Iron Man should be a little more powerful than War Machine, and from what I've seen initially, it looks like War Machine's a little better. What What do you What are your thoughts on that? It kind of sucks, but you know, from looking at the state of the game. He came out a long time ago before War Machine was even thought of, and a lot of where we're at right now is definitely can tell the difference between what we have with Iron Man and War Machine. So I'm hoping maybe we get a small rework down the road, which can kind of better make the Iron Man seem a little bit better. Yeah, I mean that, that's kind of the nature of these games, right? The newer characters are always going to be a little more powerful than the older characters.、Uh, so yeah, hopefully they start to rework some of these characters, like Hulk. Come on, Hulk needs a rework, and obviously Iron Man that we're talking about. Let's move on, because this there's some very interesting stuff with Mantis. You want you want to go through a quick rundown of the comic book version of Mantis? Because before we talked,、uh, the only version I was familiar with is the one that we saw in the movie. Wow, there's a there's actually a lot. So Mantis was first appeared in Avengers issue one twelve. In June of 1973, created by Steve Englehart, and wasn't introduced to the team until Avengers 114. She was really just an Avenger before a Guardian, if anything. So that's kind of crazy. Not a lot of people knew that.、Mm, well, I didn't know that about her. That's that's pretty cool. What what else do we know? She's half Vietnamese and half German. She was trained by the Kree as a master martial artist, and her father is actually a villain known as Libra, and he's a part of the. Of、uh, the Zodiac Cartel, who are basically known for trying to dominate political power and also economic power. Oh, so she's、so、not even an alien like she is in 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 the movie. She's just a human character that just is a human. Yeah. The, does, does she have does she have does she have a lot of powers at this point? Because she、so、seems like a normal point, human, right? So at this point, no. Okay. Right now, she's only, a, like I said, a master martial artist. She knows a lot of pressure points, and that's her, really her main thing. Other than that, it's very light on the powers besides her like enhanced durability. Now you said she was trained by Kree. Yes. Does does she get anything special from that? No, she does not. Okay. Uh, and, and you've shown me some pictures of her green. How how did this all come about? Because So that's actually kind of a crazy story. <laughs> I'm, so I'm ready creator, for it. I'm ready for it. <laughs> the creator Steve Englehart actually ended up leaving Marvel, and when he did, he actually took the character Mantis and took it over to DC, and under the JLA title, they renamed her Willow. And so after that, she was actually moved from DC to several other comic book companies with different renames every time, but she eventually did come back to Marvel. In 2007, 2007 for the Annihilation Conquest storyline, and that's where she became officially green in Marvel and sporting the antennas. Is this Mantis? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I guess they changed her because it would be too confusing with Mantis and Gamora both being green, is what I would assume, because she's not green in the movies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, same with Drax. Drax is green as well. I just think they sent one too much green. One team, yeah. Maybe you think what six characters and three of them being green in the movies. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So what what are her powers at this point when she finally comes back to Marvel? And I guess Marvel would have owned her throughout the whole time, correct? But when she when they finally reintroduce her、uh, as Mantis, she's different. So what are her powers at this point? Her powers are telepathy, empathy, which is able to read people's emotions. Astral projections, chlorokinesis, really where she's possessed the ability to grow vegetation around her, as well as pyrokinesis and the pre precognition, 
which was really only shown in Annihilation Conquest, where she could possess to see with everything, with all the events happening before it would happen. Other than that, it's that and like some little bit of self healing. So the healing is kind of the only thing that I'm seeing in the movies, but she's got all these other powers, uh, and that that's kind of the only thing that's really reflected in her kit, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it, her, it, she could be like a pyro Groot combo that with Doctor Strange in there, but all, all they really uh, focus on is the healing, which I, which I, I think, think they should. What, what are your thoughts on her kit now? I agree. I think with the Guardians team, if they're really trying to push it to be more of a meta team, they should have worked on healing, kind of like how Defenders have two forms of healing, same with S.H.I.E.L.D., but... Her powers weren't really that well represented when it came to the chlorokinesis or pyrokinesis. So I can understand why they didn't take those like those small little powers and put them into the game. Yeah, I, I agree with their decision to take that out because uh, for a casual fan like myself, uh, I, I'd, I would be like, where is this coming from? I don't know what all this is. So, uh, so are you happy with her kit, what you're seeing now so far? I'm I'm actually very happy. I'm really excited when she comes out and see what we can do with Guardians, especially this rework that came out. Hopefully we can see something like a really cool team up here shortly. I'm really interested in trying this team out and seeing what is the best five of the Guardians for this raid. A uh, lot, lot of thoughts going around now, uh, but it looks very interesting. So I'm very curious to see what is going to happen with this. But... That, that was cool. So thank thank you for coming on and uh, educating myself and hopefully a lot of the viewers of this channel with these these comic book histories that uh, you know more more casual fans like myself don't really know of. Uh, tell tell everybody about your channel, what you do on there, and you stream also, correct? Yes. So with my YouTube channel, I'm fairly new to the YouTube platform. I started about three months ago. I am doing just comic book stories and comic book characters explained while also promoting smaller comic book publishers. I actually recently did an interview with Justin Criselli on the Red Knight comic. But I'm also a huge MSF player, so I stream every day, Monday, oh, Monday through Fridays, uh, around 8 o'clock EST. I hope not too much on Mondays and Thursdays because I stream at that time too. I, I, I do don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, um, any, anything else before we wrap this up? Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to hang out tonight, and I really hope we can do this again. Yeah, it, it looks forward. I'm looking forward to that uh, that Carnage stuff. So, guys, if you are interested in some of the comic book history of a lot of these characters in Marvel Strike Force, make sure you check out his channel. Uh, and he is the moderator of my Discord server, so if you run into any problems, I'm not up there. Uh, he is the guy to see, and he's he's been doing that f way before I knew he was a comic book expert. So uh, thank you for that, and I will see you guys next time. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comics, because if you guys like this, we're going to do this more often. Uh, if you don't, then maybe more sporadically or change up the format or something, but... I hope you guys like this, and if you did, let me know. Subscribe to the channel. Smash on that like button. Join the notification squad. And I do want to remind you guys about Blue Stacks before you go, because that does support the channel, and you can play Marvel Strike Force or any other Android game on your computer. And Oddball, I do have one question before you go. What is that? What you gonna do, brother, when Valley Flynn and all the Valley Maniacs come down on you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, brother. I will see you next time. Valley Flynn, out.